Welcome to another Ryan Sports Views. Tonight, I'm reacting to the announcement of the Canadian men's national team roster for the first three games of World Cup qualifiers in the Octo Honduras at BMO, away to the U.S. and El Salvador at BMO. I'm reacting to the roster that was announced, and I will give you my best 11 to where I think they should play for these three games. So we will start off. This will be a quick video, about 15 minutes. Should be quick. For the goalkeepers, we got Milan Borian, Maxime Crapeau, and James Panamis. Milan Borjan, of course, the longtime starter for Canada. I think he's losing his grip on that spot, but we'll get there. Maxime Crapeau, a very good number one tandem, a very good backup if that's what you want him to be. But I actually think he's number one now, and he's very good, probably in a tandem, as in he's right there with Borjan, even though I don't think he makes the mistakes, and I think the team is more comfortable in front of him. If you want it to be a tandem, that's what you got. I don't think so, but that's you. James Panamis, of course, played in the Olympic qualifiers earlier this year for the under-24s because of the COVID pandemic, pushing it back a year. Played pretty well. I thought he was good. Is good to get a third spot here. I like it. I'm happy he's here. He's a good goalkeeper. I'm not saying he's going to get time, but say the worst happens for Borjan and Kripo. They both get hurt during this window and Panamis gets time. I'm not against it. I'm cool with it. He's a good third goalkeeper. Defenders. Daniil Henry, Scott Kennedy, Kamal Miller, and Steven Vittoria as the center backs. Our full backs. Samuel Atacube, Alfonso Davies, Alistair Johnston, and Richie Lorea. I like this. I really do. I think this is a very good defensive group. Our center backs are all good. If the worst center back you have is Daniel Henry out of these four, I think that's a pretty good group. I think that's a very good group. Daniel Henry has his mistakes, but he's not bad. I've always liked Daniel Henry. I've always rated him. I think him going to Europe with West Ham instead of staying with Toronto ruined him to a certain extent, but I like Daniel Henry. Scott Kennedy, of course, came onto the scene during the group stage and the second round, playing well. Kamal Miller looked great at the Gold Cup. I think he is going to get a starting spot here. Kamal Miller looked amazing at the Gold Cup. I think he gets a starting spot here. Steven Vittoria, the rock in defense for us. Of course, he gets another call-up. Outside backs, you got Samuel Atacube, Alfonso Davies, Alistair Johnston, Richie Larea. Same type of thing here. If your worst outside back is Atacube, I'm not mad about it. And Atacube is a good player. He's better than Godinho. He's better than Broguillard. I'll take Atacube any day of the week and twice on Sundays as the fourth outside back. And also, you could play Tejon Buchanan there. So, he's really fifth. I mean, you could really play Tejon Buchanan there. So, honestly, that like he's fifth. So... I'll take that any day of the week and twice on Sundays. Your midfielders, Steven Ustakio, Liam Fraser, Atiba Hutchinson, Mark Anthony K, Jonathan Osorio, Samuel Piet, and David Wallerspoon. This is a good midfield group. Now, I think we know who plays most of the minutes out of this. Ustakio, Osorio, Hutchinson, K. Piet, I think Ustakio's overtaking him. I really do. I think Samuel Piet is a bench player from now on for Canada. And I like Samuel Piet. I know, I know, I know that's sacrilegious. As a Toronto fan, I shouldn't say I like Samuel Piet, but I like him. I like him. He's a good player. He's a bulldog. I like the bulldog mentality. But I think Ustakio's overtaking him. Ustakio helps the team play the way they want to play. Samuel Piet is more like a Michael Bradley. I don't think he helps this team play the way they want to play. I think he sort of kills possession. I think he sort of kills the press. I, I think Estacchio is better at also, while defending, also putting the ball forward, playing it forward, working the press, having it play fast. I think Estacchio is better. So, Piet's pretty much out of it. Waterspoon... I think he's a super sub, honestly. Atiba's going to get time. Liam Fraser, 
I think he's sort of getting screwed over at every turn by every manager who he plays under. Whether it's the crew, whether it's Vanny, whether it's Armas, whether it would be Perez, whether it would be Bob Bradley, whether it's Caleb Porter, whether it's John Herdman, he's getting screwed over at every turn. He was great three years ago. It was like, hey, you know, this guy's going to be great. And now he's a flop. Yeah, he's here for numbers, honestly. And then your forwards, Tejon Buchanan, Lucas Cavallini, Jonathan David, Junior Horlett, and Kyle Laird. Lucas Cavallini is here just in the case he could be a super sub for a game, honestly. Hullet, he'll probably play striker. He's probably playing if Cavallini can't as a super sub. Tejon Buchanan's more likely to be a sub for Lorea or Davies as a super sub. I don't think he's there to play striker. I think he's only a forward in name only. I think he's more of an outside back in this team, but I think that's always been the way it is. I don't know why they put him down as a forward. You could have four forwards and five outside backs. It's not mandated to have five forwards. So I don't know why they put him down as a forward. I think he's more of an outside back, a fullback. I don't get it, but there you go. David and Laren are going to start at striker during this tournament or this first three games. I think that's obvious. So my best 11, in my eyes, here's who I would start for these three games. Now, again, you could have rotation. Would that be the El Salvador game? Probably. You want to start off strong against Honduras, you want to play that 11 against the USA with minimal changes. I think El Salvador is the one that has big changes, but here's the way I would start things. In goal, Maxime Capo. He's the guy. For me, Maxime Capo is the guy. He's a great player. He's a better at starting in goal. The defense plays a lot stronger around him. They don't let him make mistakes. They all play together. They're a lot more comfortable than they are against Borjan or with Borjan. So I want Capo in goal. I said this during the Gold Cup, except Borjan wasn't called up. But I pretty much said I like that he wasn't. I want Crapo to keep the number one shirt. At least the number one position. He's wearing 16, but the number one position. He looked great in the Gold Cup. The team is a lot more comfortable around him. He doesn't make mistakes. I want Crapo. I do. I want him in goal. The back three. It's a 3-5-2. As we saw in the Gold Cup and the second window of the group stage and the second round of World Cup qualifiers in June. At the back, Scott Kennedy, Kamal Miller, and Steven Vittoria. That is a good back line. As I said, Daniil Henry's the odd man out here for at least two games. I think Kennedy, Miller, Vittoria is the back line. I think so for sure. The outside backs, left back, Alfonso Davies, right back, Richie Lorea, and you could say, what about Tejon? What about Johnston? Richie, Richie's been the best player on TFC when they've been so bad, honestly. He's still one of the top three best players on the team. He has not had a bad season by any stretch of the imagination. The team has. Richie Lorea has not. So I still think Richie is great. I want Richie to start. I think he's better than Johnston. And I think Buchanan's more of a left side so you're going to have to replace Davies as a super sub for Buchanan and then let Buchanan maybe start a game at the left. I don't think he's right. So Johnston's more the right, and I think Lorea is better than Johnston. He is. So there you go. Midfield three, Steven Ustakio, Jonathan Osorio, and Atiba Hutchinson. Now you could call Toronto FC bias with Osorio. He's not had that great of a season. But honestly, out of this midfield... I want Osorio. You have Estacchio as your, def your defensive mid, but he also puts the ball forward. He also can pass it forward. You have Osorio as your eight. Do you want K as the eight or the ten? Hutchinson's more of the eight. Do you want K as your ten? Do you want Piet as your ten? You could say Watherspoon. I think Osorio is the best of this situation. He's like the weak link of all this, honestly, and you could say that. He's not been great this year. Now, that's TFC bias. Atiba Hutchinson, if he's there, he's going to play. 
He's an ageless wonder. Tom Brady style. Atiba Hutchinson will be the 8 of this team. Osorio the 10, Estacchio the 6, Hutchinson the 10, and then the strikers, Jonathan David and Kyle Lahren. That is obviously obvious. Cavallini's hurt. He may be there as a super sub a little bit. I don't think Hoylett plays striker. As I said, I don't think Buchanan plays striker much. I think Hoylett is the super sub if need be. If Cavallini can't play, if Cavallini can play, Mr. Fubar is your super sub. You knew that was coming. But David and Laren start as striker. So with that said, I think that's a pretty good 11 for this window. So there you go. If you like this video, like it, share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell all your friends. Tomorrow I have a live stream watch along in RSR for CF Montreal versus Toronto FC, the 401 Derby at Stad Saputo, 6.30 p.m. Eastern or Central, 7.30 Eastern. I'll be on, of course. We'll see how fun it is. And then, of course, check out my Patreon, $5, 10 or $20 a month. Anything's appreciated. Help support the channel. Be awesome if you do. Also support by subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing, all of that. And put this in playlists, all of that. I need the growth. Let's get there. I'm so close to partnership. 48 watch hours. So it's probably about 45 now, looking at my numbers, to 4,000. I'm this close. Let's get there. And then once I get there, I'll start blowing up again. I think it put a little bit of a cap on me. It's like... We'll see if you make it. It's like the last moment's the hardest. It's like you're at 1,000, but we'll see if you get these watch hours as quick as you need to. And then once you do, because they will put you over once you're in the partner program. Because they have to. They're not going to lose money on you. They have to put you over a little bit more. So it's like, are you pushing for it, honestly? They'll get you close and give you that carrot. Be like, hey, got to wait a little bit. Almost had it. You got to be quicker than that. And just get it over yourself, and then they start putting you over once you, they put you in. That's the way I see it. So get me there, all right? Get me there. Go be awesome. You know it. I'm Ryan, and I'm out. Peace. See you tomorrow.